What's up guys, welcome back. I hope you all had a good time over Christmas and New Year. We'll be looking at how to approach a really pale skin tone today. Just a wee caveat before we start, the colour on the camera shows up a little less blue than in real life. Once that new 4K camera gets here, we won't have that issue anymore. So just in case you're painting along and thinking you're getting a slightly different colour than on the video. Alright, so to start off we'll be using Fantasy and Games Miskatonic Grey for our base colour. It's quite a transparent paint so you have to apply this in two or three thin coats. It has a very subtle purple tint to it, so it's quite a nice starting colour for doing cold whites. The next step is to wash quite heavily with Games Workshop Drakenhof Nightshade. You can see that I haven't attached his arm yet. I'm keeping the arm unglued for now so that I have an easier time painting the tunic. So if you've done the same, just wash it separately like I've done here. So once the wash has dried, we'll bring the details back by building up the colour again using our Miskatonic Grey. We're just applying it to all the raised areas, leaving the wash in the shadows. So rather than blocking the colour in, I tried to create a bit of a colour transition over a few layers, just by letting some of the blue from the wash show through in the darker areas. So that just helps to create a bit of a blend before we start to apply our highlights. For our first highlight we'll take some Vallejo Red Beige and we'll mix in some Vallejo Ivory to lighten it. We want to mix enough Ivory into the beige so that it's roughly the same sort of brightness as our base colour. Now we're going to take some of that colour and mix it into the Miskatonic Grey and we'll use that as our initial highlight. So I'm just pulling it over the surface letting it settle where I want the highlight to be the strongest. So here at the tip of the knuckles. and then I'll highlight the upper part of each muscle. On the face, we'll target all the usual spots. So here I'm pushing the paint up to the upper side of the eyebrow, and then I'll do the upper part of the cheek. His head is quite heavily tilted to one side, so that's going to leave one side in heavy shadow. So we only really need to highlight one side, which is always a bonus. And we'll do the little crease beside his mouth. We'll also do the top of the forehead, the chin, the upper lip, and the tip of the ears. Oh, and the tip of the nose as well. Alright, so add a bit more of your highlight colour in there and we'll go back and push the contrast a little bit higher. So apart from the knuckles here, we're going to be pushing the paint to the upper side of the surfaces. For all the muscles, push the highlight up to the highest point, but on the knuckles, draw it down to the lowest point. Here on the leg you can see that I pull the paint up to the top side of each muscle. We're going to be adding texture to all of this later but for now we're just building up the volumes by trying to pick out where the lights and darks would be. To continue, mix some Vallejo Ivory into your highlight colour and we'll mix that onto the upper part of the muscles. Mm -hmm. 
And now using the same paint we'll start to add texture by adding little dots of paint to the surface. Notice I'm putting some of these lower down on the muscle, just a few here and there. The dots will stand out quite a bit on those areas so you don't want to paint a lot of them there. Just add a few here and there and that's going to give you quite a good illusion of texture. On the arm we'll do the same sort of thing, first pushing the paint up to the upper side of the muscles and then adding some little dots for texture. So this arm is just blue tacked on right now. It's easier to paint when it's attached to the model as you can get a better idea of where the light would be. So we're using the same sort of idea on the bicep, just pushing the paint up to the upper part of the muscle. While that's drying, we may as well work on another section, so we'll just push the highlights a bit more on the knuckles here. And we're doing that by pulling the paint to the lower side of the knuckles, letting it settle at that bottom edge. And again, we'll do the triceps the same way as the biceps. Oops, slight mistake there, so what we'll do is just grab a second clean, slightly damp brush and just pull the paint off the surface while it's still wet. Alright, so now that those parts are dry, we'll go back in and add some texture, painting on little dots over the surface. We'll use the exact same process on the forearm, pulling the paint up to the upper side of the muscle and then once it's dry we'll add a few little dots for texture. So it's really up to you where you place these, there's no hard and fast rules to follow but if you try and make your spacing a little irregular you're going to get a better result. Just try and be careful that you don't make them the same distance apart or you'll build up a pattern and then it's going to look more like a painted on design than surface texture and you don't really want that. So I'll do a little more on the face here. I'm going to carefully add a little highlight here on the upper lip and as the detail here is so small I'm more or less edge highlighting here. We'll add a couple wee blobs on the nose there and a little on the eyebrow. So even though the face is so small I'm still trying to get a bit of a blend going just pushing the paint to where I want it. On the cheek we'll put a few little dots to give a bit of texture. And we'll hit the top of the head just below the horn and then we'll add a couple more dots just to push that detail level up a little higher. Alright, so on the other arm we'll do the same sort of thing again, painting on where we want the main highlight and then adding little dots to help blend it out and add some texture. I've been experimenting quite a lot lately with texture. Making everything really smooth is cool but it tends to make things look a bit artificial. I think adding texture puts a lot more life into the models. It is good to be able to do smooth blending but it's, I've definitely found myself moving away from that sort of thing. Alright, so add a bit more ivory now and a touch of water just to keep it nice and thin. And we're going to add another round of texture. This time I'm not really blocking the colour in, I'm just going straight for the dots. So 
So you've got to be really careful on the face now because you could lose detail very easily here. So I'm just trying to take my time and making sure the tip of my brush is going where I want it before I commit to adding the highlight. I'll add some thin lines on the kneecap here to make it look like creases. So we're just going to keep adding little dots to build up our highlights and texture. For the last highlight we'll use pretty much pure ivory. And I'll just put a few little dots at the top of each muscle just to push the highlight that little bit further. Thank you. 
Alright guys, so hopefully that gives you some more ideas on how you can go about painting a really pale skin tone. Just try and keep your shadows dark and your highlights bright and you can't go far wrong. I'll be painting the final model from the Malifaux crew next, then we can get stuck into the, the cruise mini from Raging Heroes. Plus I should be recording them on the new 4K camera, I think that'll make quite a big difference in quality, I'm really looking forward to using that. Alright guys, so thanks for watching and thanks again for all your support, it really means a lot. Take it easy. Bye for now.